Hello everybody, my name is Greg Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of TechViews Nope. And today I am going to show you how to remotely connect into a Windows computer through another Windows computer using the remote desktop. Now with this, I was actually using this in the real world and there's going to be a little bit of lag but I had to pre-record it because I didn't have my microphone with me but I figured that I might as well get the video portion of it and show you the actual real world this is not a joking around thing this was real world and I was six hours away from my main computer and I had to get some stuff off it but before we continue let's get into a quick advertisement I had to make and and then let's jump into the actual video Thanks for sticking around during this transition. Now, if you want to help me out at all, either by financial or other means, then feel free to click the Patreon button to go to my Patreon campaign, and that way you can donate there and check out what I plan to do with money. Or you can click the PayPal button and you can donate there. You can either donate on time there or do a monthly recurrence. And lastly, if you don't want to help out with money, either because you just don't have it or whatever it is, then feel free to share this video and share my other videos. And please check out the top button to go to my main channel. But anyways, hope that you like this video. And let's bring it back to the actual video. Now real quick, I am in my main computer remotely through AVAS services, but I found that this remote desktop is sometimes a lot quicker, so I'm going for that. So I put in remotes into control panel and I came across this, then invite and then send an invitation as a file. And what this does is you can download the file and upload it. If, if you're doing what I'm doing, you could just put it in your drafts folder into say Gmail or whatever and that way you have the file you don't have to worry about doing whatever or you can send it by email like gmail or whatever now one thing to keep in mind is the file and the password that you're seeing right there they are associated to each other so if you've done this before and trying to use the previous file and um, trying to use a new password it won't work if you're trying to use the old password and the old file it won't work because that session's closed out so that's something to keep in mind. That's very, very, very important. Now, you need to locate the file on the other computer. Again, this laptop was six hours away. I threw in the password, press OK. Let's go back to my main. And as you see here in a second, the main will ask me to allow the secondary computer, the remote computer that's six hours away from my main to, to um, look at my stuff. This won't grant access to control things, but this will ask, can I uh, remotely con see w what's going on? And I press yes, and let's go back to my remote computer that's six hours away. And in a second, we will be allowed, and there we go. We pressed okay on my main, and we're allowed to mess around and do whatever. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the remote computer, it was, uh, I think about 12 inch monitor or something like that. And my main has two 21 inch monitors. So if you did a actual size, you can barely see everything. So you have to do a fit and you have to scroll around on the screen to actually see anything. Now, one thing I want to mention right now before I forget is you can use this for troubleshooting so you can use the chat method as you see I'm playing around with right here but the one big thing I want to mention is you cannot hear sound remotely and through this method I don't think you can transfer files you can transfer files through the AVAS method and the reason why I prefer this over to AVAS if I'm not transferring files and if I'm transferring files I prefer a, a cloud service the reason why I prefer this is it seems to be a little bit more stable. As you see here, I close down the AVAS and I'm purely on the uh, this. And as you see here with this straight line, that's my second monitor. So it seamlessly goes from one to the next. 
I can do work on it as if I'm sitting there. There is a little bit of lag because it is going over the internet, but that's a huge thing to keep in mind is um, you can still work on your systems. Uh, now, one thing I, I want to mention is if there's a lot of things going on the screen, that will slow down the stuff dramatically. But if there's very little going on the screen, then you should be fine. Like, say, for example, if you're just writing up a document remotely, you should be pretty much fine. But if you're going to actually play a game or something like that, that's probably not going to happen. But anyways, I just want to show you guys how to do this. This is quick, this is simple, this is easy. This is really meant for if you're sitting at your computer, you don't know how to do something, you can send this file, this password over someone that you knows how to do it, how to fix it, how to do whatever. They, they can log in, they can ask for control, they can get control, and they can go from there and uh, they can help you out then log out and and all is done and uh one, one thing i i want to mention is to to top it all off uh with with the motion thing real quick before i forget the reason why you don't see that uh colorful background the the charts in the background is not because the this took it away it's because with all the moving images it slowed down the stuff massively so I, I just took it off for right now and use the black bank uh, blank background. But anyways, it's been Craig Bent, found on our Tech Fuse Nope. Please like, please subscribe, and please share. I hope you have a great day.